This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, March the 22nd, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Nicholas Owen. He was a lay Jesuit, so not a priest, who is best remembered for the creation of priest holes in 16th and 17th century England. At that time in England, the Catholic Church was very closely associated with France and Spain, two major enemies of England. Henry VIII had died in the mid-16th century after creating the Church of England and seizing most of the property of the Catholic Church and murdering lots and lots and lots and lots of Catholics in truly horrible ways. His successors, Edward VI, Elizabeth I, and James I, were paranoid, and they were heartless, and they made it illegal to be a priest or to harbor a priest. Even the possession of Catholic books or art and mass vestments was punishable by flogging, and the failure to attend church at the C of E every weekend was punishable by a genuinely huge fine. And this is what set the stage for Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder plot to kill the king. Still, the faithful in England needed mass, and there were many priests who risked their lives to do that. One of the ways they did that was the construction of priest holes. These ranged from a full-on chapel with an altar hidden under the stairs to a little tiny compartment hidden behind a cabinet. Nicholas Owen, today's saint, was famous for cleverly building these holes into the homes of rich and some poor Catholics who could then hide the priest during a raid by the king's men. It was dangerous work, and Owen ended up in the Tower of London in 1606 for his troubles. He was tortured for a bit and finally martyred soon thereafter. Sticking with England, today in 1765, Parliament passed the Stamp Act which really meant to squeeze the American colonies who were already feeling over-squeezed and who were starting to grumble about taxation without representation. The Stamp Act was about paper, so legal documents and especially newspapers had to be printed on certified, that is stamped paper, sold by England to the colonies. And so if I wanted to sell my horse to my neighbor, I had to pay a tax to the local magistrate to write up the sale, and then I had to pay another tax for the paper that he used. If I wanted to print an advertisement for my small business, I had to buy the expensive paper from England, and I couldn't just whip down to Ye Olde Office Depot to buy the stuff that was on sale. Where things really got heated was the newspapers. Americans have always believed in the free press, and now England was telling us that newspapers were going to be more expensive because the paper they made overseas was required and was somehow better and necessary more than the cheap and abundant paper that we can make here. This was the moment in which the first major protests calling for independence happened, and they revolved around the newspapers. The Stamp Act was repealed after less than a year, but the damage was done, and the wheels of revolution were definitely in motion by that time in 1766. Today will be the birthday in 2233 of Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the United Federation of Planets. Captain Kirk is captain of the USS Enterprise No A, B, C, or D, it's Kirk's birthday because William Shatner, the actor who famously portrayed him in the original Star Trek series in the late 1960s, was born today in 1931. Shatner, along with Leonard Nimoy and creator Gene Roddenberry, redefined science fiction and created a phenomenon that really no one could have predicted. So happy birthday, Mr. Shatner, and happy birthday to be Captain James Tiberius Kirk. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.